Hey folks, I've been getting a lot of questions about V-carving lately, and I thought it might be helpful to take a step back and kind of show you exactly what V-carving is doing. Um, because in the settings piece, it's not always very helpful. It just kind of says V-carve, and you get to sort of do trial and error. But I think if we can give you a better idea of what V-carve is doing, it'll help you make some better carves and also help you help keep you from running into some of the problems. Um, so I've taken a couple of simple shapes here, uh, just a rectangle, moon, a couple of circles, a star, and some text. And we're going to V-carve all of that. And then we're going to go back and take a look at what the bit is actually doing and how it determines what pieces to cut. So let's go ahead and carve this in some MDF and see what we've got. Okay, for this I've got the dust collection removed right now so we can get a little bit better view of what's going on and hopefully you'll be able to see what's going on with this carve. So let's go ahead and give this a go. So looking at our patterns here, we can see that basically the bit goes down as far as it can between the width of the lines in each case. It also rises up in the corners to allow it to make this very nice little sharp corner here on the edges of our piece. Now something interesting to note here, our first circle is just kind of a plunge and cut. Our second circle is the same. However, our second circle in our design was three quarters of an inch wide. This circle is only a half inch wide here. So the size of our bit was a half inch and that's all it was able to go down and cut. Now with our star, we do the same kind of thing. We cut here in the center and we cut towards the outside and the same with our words. Again, the bit only goes down as far as the width of our lines, right? So the width of our lines is gonna determine the depth of our cut. V-bits come in a variety of sizes and also angles. So this is a V90, which is what we just cut our piece with, a V60 and a V45. Now, in practical terms, what this means is that for the exact same shapes we just cut, the V90 will make a shallower cut, the V60 will make one deeper than that, and the V45 will make one deeper than all three. And I'll show you what, what I mean by that with a little bit of graphics here. Okay, so here we have our three different bit sizes. V90, V60, V45. And each one of these little boxes is a quarter of an inch by a quarter of an inch. So think of these as like our little rectangle that we carved earlier. If I take my V90 and I drop it down into the box, you'll see that it goes down halfway. And that means that anytime I have lines that are a quarter of an inch apart, this is going to cut down an eighth of an inch. Now the V60 is going to go down a little bit further, not quite to the bottom, but about three quarters of the way there. I'm sure there's some math that describes it, but I'm allergic to the math, so that kind of takes it out for me. Our V45 goes down and actually should pretty much touch the bottom, right? So our V45 is going to go down almost the, the full quarter inch, maybe a little bit more. So for this, we're just going to use our V90. The question kind of becomes, when do I use the 60 or the 45? So I want to print you a little bit of an example. The short answer is, if you've got smaller, finer, delicate stuff, 
these can be a better choice sometimes. So I'm going to make a pattern and I'll give you an idea of what it looks like with the 90 versus the 60 versus the 45. Okay, to start with, I've just created a small pattern, three of them, based on our little crescent moon shape. These are kind of small. They're about a third of an inch high. So they should give us something small to work with and show off the definition of the other bits. Now I use this just because it was a nice quick pattern um, and it'll hopefully give you an idea of what the different bits do. So now what I need to do is set up tool paths for each one for a 90, 60, and a 45. So I've got these over here. Now the other thing that I've got to do is set this up so that it's three separate files because I'm going to have to do bit changes in between each one. So again, I'll just disable some of these and save it and we'll get three separate files and get things going. So here you can see there's a pretty remarkable difference between the V90, the V60, and the V45. The smaller you get with your designs, the more you're going to want a deeper angle bit to go ahead and give you the definition that you need to make things look right for your V-carves. So that's where those, those tighter angles come in. They're going to give you a deeper cut, uh, but they're also going to give you a little bit more definition than you get with the V90. So we've seen how the 60 and the 45 can provide us with a little bit more definition to some of our smaller cuts, generally by going a little bit deeper and just providing a little bit more of a contrast. However, the V90 offers us some really big advantages in terms of math. We always know for a fact that if our width is a quarter, our depth will be an eighth it will always be half of the width of our lines. We can use this to our advantage in a couple of ways. Um, one of those is that I always know how thick my box top needs to be because of how, how wide my lines will be. I just measure the widest point and I take half of that and I know my box top needs to be thicker than that measurement. Additionally, we can use this V90 shape and the fact that everything is halfway to create a raised effect using V carving. Let me show you what I mean. So next we're going to go back to our test piece here and I'm going to go ahead and import an SVG file. Uh, this one comes from an Etsy collection and I'll post links down in the doodly-doo uh, that'll show you where to get it. It was all of two dollars and fifty cents so yeah pay for art it's a good thing. Let's see, Etsy, rows, number 11. All right, so now we've got this. And I'm going to go ahead and do just a straight up V-carve on this. Just to show you what the original would look like. All right, so if we do rows. Okay, create a new group for these. And drag that down into there. Come on, in there. Okay, cool. Enable. Okay. First, we're going to go ahead and do a regular V-carve of this. And I'll show you what that looks like. And then we're going to do a raised version of this. Uh, so let's go ahead and do some bee carving. Okay, so as you can see, this makes for actually a very nice little bee carve here. Um, some of this is a little bit bulky over here. But other than that, at this size, it's a really nice, delicate looking piece. Uh, but sometimes you want something a little bit different than a traditional V-carve. So what I'd like to show you next is how to get this to be, instead of an engraved piece, a raised piece. So let's take a look at how you do that. 
Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to duplicate this guy. Er, bonk. Let's see. Grab everything here. Copy. I'm going to group him and drag him over here. All right. So we've got a copy of this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and use the offset path. And what I want to do with this is I'm going to make two offsets around this. First one I'm going to make at 0 0.063 outside. And then I'm going to go twice that. Select my middle piece again, offset, point one two six outside, apply. Okay, so now I've got two lines around my, my rows here. What I want to do is I'm going to select the rows itself and the outside line. Leave that inner one deselected for right now. And then I'm going to come back in and I'm going to start a third group here and I'm going to v-carve again. And you notice where my other one was cutting to the inside of all of these pieces. This V-car, because I've got this outer piece here, now cuts to the outside of all the pieces. And you'll also notice that the cut follows that inner line that I made. So what I can do now is I'm going to create a rectangle around this. And get close and then we'll stretch him all right okay so now we want to resize him so he goes all the way around this that'll be good enough for what we need right now okay done so now what I want to do is I want to select my rectangle and my little inner guy here. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to do another different bit. So this time we're going to do an eighth of an inch bit. We're going to do a contour. We're going to do a pocket. So remember our outside was at 126, our inside was at 0.63. So my V bit should cut 0.63. So we're going to take an eighth of an inch bit, eighth inch end mill, until it OK, and we're going to cut 0.63 deep. This is going to take a little while, but that's fine. All right. So that gives us these two right here. Let's undo that because I don't need that one. And we're going to save these as two different files. So I'm going to disable this. And so I've still got my outer carve yeah, so that goes around everything save the g-code the right folder yes okay then I'm going to disable this one enable this one Okay, so that's got our pocket, and this is what we're going to use with our eighth inch bit. Let me save the G code for that. And 
Okay. All right, let's give that a carve and see what we come up with. Okay, so as you can see, this gives us kind of a neat little effect just by itself, right? That we now get the outline of the rose as opposed to this, you know, kind of a heavier look here with this. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take away everything outside of that as well so that we're left with just our raised rose here. So let's go ahead and swap bits and get things started. So now you can see we've got two very different kinds of roses. And depending on what's best for you, you might find this one more pleasing or something like this more pleasing. I think this is a really neat thing for a box top design. Um, you can just go ahead and shave away all the stuff off the top of the box except the rose. And I think that leaves a very nice little design on top. Again, this is very much a matter of personal preference, but um, both of these, I think, come up with some very pleasing designs. So do a little bit of playing with V-carving and see what you come up with. 